Now let's take a closer look at the hemodialysis filter, also called the dialyzer. This is a standard hemodialysis filter, and this is a simple representation of a hemodialysis filter. Let's call it deflux. The body of the hemodialysis filter is comprised of tightly packed core of hollow synthetic fibers, like tiny straws as shown here, or a sandwich sheets not shown here. The wall of the fiber is made of a porous semi-permeable membrane. Modern dialyzers use synthetic dialyzer membranes that are more biocompatible, such as polysulfone or polyacrylonitrile. Undialyzed blood, denoted in dark red, enters the dialyzer at the arterial end and flows through the lumen of these fibers unidirectionally. Dialyzed blood, denoted in bright red, leaves the dialyzer at the venous end. The rate at which blood flows through the dialyzer is also called the blood flow rate, or QB, in milliliters per minute. The blood pump is set to deliver a prescribed QB. The dialysate solution enters the dialyzer close to the venous end. The rate at which it flows through the dialyzer is called dialysate flow rate, or QD, again in milliliters per minute. It fills the space between the hollow fibers and flows through the dialyzer in the opposite direction to the blood flow. This is called countercurrent flow. Now let's focus on one of these hollow fibers. Note that the wall of the fiber has tiny pores which make it a semi-permeable membrane. The semi-permeable membrane of the fiber allows solutes to move across between the blood and the dialysate. The countercurrent flow between the blood and the dialysate allows for maximum transport of solutes across the semi-permeable membrane by delaying equilibration of the solute concentrations. The dialysate contains sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, bicarbonate, glucose, magnesium, and water. Bicarbonate and not acetate is now the preferred buffer in high flow dialysis as acetate in high concentrations can cause intolerance, that is, symptoms of nausea, vomiting, headache, and hypotension, as well as worsen metabolic acidosis and increase the risk of cardiac arrhythmias.